Welcome to Writer's ER, where we assist doctoral and master's students in navigating the intricacies of academic research. Today, we're diving into a critical component of study design, research sampling techniques. Choosing the right sample is vital for the credibility of your findings and can impact everything from survey results to experimental outcomes. Whether you're conducting qualitative interviews or quantitative analyses, Understanding and applying the right sampling methodologies is key to your research success. Sampling is the process by which researchers select a subset of data from a larger population. This step is crucial because it ensures the practicality and efficiency of the research, and the accuracy of this selection process directly influences the generalizability of your findings. There are two main categories of sampling methods, probability and non-probability sampling, each serving different research purposes. Probability sampling involves random selection, giving each member of the population an equal chance of being included in the sample. This method is critical for quantitative research that aims to make statistical inferences about a population. Techniques within probability sampling include simple random sampling, where every individual has the same probability of being selected, stratified sampling, which involves dividing the population into subgroups and taking a random sample from each, and cluster sampling, where the population is segmented into clusters, and a random sample of these clusters is selected. On the other hand, non-probability sampling does not involve random selection and is used when the research conditions do not support the use of probability techniques. This approach is often employed in qualitative research where the goal is to gain deep insights rather than to generalize the findings to the whole population. Methods include convenient sampling, where participants are selected based on their availability, purposive sampling, which targets individuals who meet a particular set of criteria, and snowball sampling, useful for reaching hard to access populations as participants recruit future subjects from their acquaintances. Which sampling method do you prefer? Let me know in the comments the choice of sampling method should align with your research objectives and the nature of your study, along with practical considerations such as time and budget. For extensive quantitative studies aimed at generalizing findings, probability sampling is ideal. Conversely, non-probability sampling might be better suited for qualitative research focused on obtaining detailed information about a specific group. Additionally, Determining the right sample size is essential to ensure the reliability of your study. The size of your sample should be large enough to provide accurate insights but manageable within the constraints of your resources. Statistical tools and sample size calculators are invaluable in this process, helping you ensure that your results are both significant and representative. As we conclude today's discussion on research sampling techniques, reflect on how the choice of sample can profoundly affect the scope and applicability of your findings. If you face sampling challenges in your research, how did you overcome them? Share your experiences and strategies in the comments to foster a community of knowledge sharing among researchers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Writers ER for more insightful academic content. Your engagement helps us continue to support students like you in achieving research excellence. Remember, mastering the art of sampling isn't just about selecting participants. It's about building a robust framework that supports the overall goals of your research. By carefully choosing and applying the appropriate sampling strategies, you can enhance the efficacy and impact of your work. Stay thorough, be strategic, and let's push the boundaries of academic research together.